Recently, I updated all of our CPU data in anticipation of AMD's upcoming Zen 5 processors, which will arrive later this month, so that's exciting stuff. Now, although I have updated all of our application and gaming data, for the video in question, I decided to focus on the gaming data because I personally find that more interesting and we are a gaming focused channel after all. Now, there was one particular set of results that I honed in on and that resulted in a few discussions that seemed to have some convinced that AMD's 3D vCache doesn't age well. But before we get to that, Today's video is sponsored by the Gigabyte Aorus 16x gaming laptop powered by NVIDIA GeForce Graphics. This powerful system features up to an RTX 4070 laptop GPU and Intel Core i9 CPU with Windforce Infinity cooling technology efficiently handling 140 watts of GPU power. Of course, there's true AI capabilities here thanks to NVIDIA's Tensor Cores, which power excellent features like DLSS3 and NVIDIA Broadcast. Plus, you get the power of the Ada Lovelace architecture for high-end ray traced gaming. The Aorus 16X comes with a spacious 16x10 aspect ratio display, all housed in a chassis with slim bezels, a large battery, Wi-Fi 7, and a great build quality. To learn more about the Aorus 16X, check the link in the description below. Okay, so based on my most recent data, some people posted to places such as X uh, claiming that the 5800X 3D, it hasn't aged well, specifically because of its 3D vCache. Likely fueling this wild speculation was the fact that in my previous video, I noted that the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D was slower than the Core i9 12900K by a 7% margin, matching the Core i7 12700K, whereas in previous head-to-heads featuring a massive sample of games, they were more neck and neck. Of course, the obvious factor here being the number of games tested. When I found the 5800X 3D and 12900K to be neck and neck a few years ago, I was testing 40 games, many of which were older games. But with the recent update, I've only tested 13 games, as the idea was to include many more processors, it's not just a head-to-head, -head. and most of the games that I did test were released in the last 12 months, so it is a very different sample of games. Also, probably important to note is that how the 5800X 3D has aged is different to how AMD's 3D vCache has aged. There is, a, there is a difference there, they're not the exact same thing. So you can compare the 5800X 3D to the 12900K, but you can't isolate and compare the 3D vCache of the 5800X 3D to the 12900K. By this I mean if you want to see how AMD's 3D vCache has aged as a technology in this specific example, it's quite simple compare it with the 5800X. So the same CPU, but without the 3D vCache. Upon release, the 5800X 3D was 23% faster than the 5800X when pairing both processors with the same DDR4-3200 memory. Then if we compare that to my most up-to-date data, we find the 5800X 3D is 24% faster than the 5800X, both using the same DDR4-3600 memory. So that settles it then. The 3D vCache of the 5800X 3D has not aged poorly at all. In fact, the benefit of this technology appears to be much the same in 2024 as it was two years ago. So then, the next question. Has the 5800X 3D aged poorly as a processor relative to something like the Core i9-12900K? Again, the answer here is no, it has not aged poorly. And again, all the data to support this was already on the channel. If we look back to our day one review of the 5800X 3D, we see that when compared to the 12900K running DDR5-6400 memory, as it was in our most up-to-date testing, it was 3-5% to slower, depending on the DDR4 memory used with the Ryzen processor. We also saw if you limited the 12900K to DDR4 memory, that the 5800X 3D was 5-7% to faster. And this data was based on a small sample of games using the RTX 3090 Ti. Fast forward to today, and the 5800X 3D has gone from around 5% slower than the DDR5 enabled 12900K to 7% slower using a faster GPU and a completely different sample of games. So moving on from what some of the experts on X seem to think, this did get me wondering about something I speculated on in that CPU update video, and that being the 12900K's ability to utilize fast DDR5 memory, which hands it a significant memory bandwidth advantage over something like the 5800X 3D, and that could play a role in modern games. 
So just how much of a benefit is DDR5 memory in these newer games? To find out, I've gone back and retested the Core i9 14900K, Core i5 14600K, Core i9 12900K, and Core i5 12600K, all with DDR4 3600 cell 14 memory. Now, please note previously, I have used high quality DDR4 4000 memory to represent DDR4 in its battle with the newer DDR5 standard, but the kit I was using has failed and no longer works at the advertised frequency. And unfortunately, I've not been able to get my hands on another kit, at least not in time for this video. That said, the DDR4 3600CL14 kit that I am using is still very good, so let's get into the data. First up, we have Baldur's Gate 3, which has been tested at the city of Baldur's Gate. Here, the 14900K saw a 23% improvement when using DDR5, while the 13600K saw a much larger 31% improvement. Interestingly, we see similar scaling behavior between the 12th gen parts. The 12900K was 22% faster using DDR5, while the 12600K was 35% faster. So it does seem as though the parts with less L3 cache and less L2 cache in this instance might benefit more from the faster memory, again, at least in this example. Moving on to The Last of Us Part 1, here we find that one of the smallest performance uplifts is actually seen with the 14900K, just 15% in this example, though the 14600K didn't benefit all that much more at 18%. The 12900K, that did see a 22% boost, and the 12600K was good for 19%. So again, the 12th gen models are enjoying a bigger uplift with DDR5, though only slightly in this example. The Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty results are also quite interesting as here the 14900K only saw a 16% uplift when using the high frequency DDR5 memory and while that's still an impressive improvement it's less than the gain achieved by the 14600K at 21%. Then we see that the 12900K and 12600K both enjoyed a massive 29% improvement when paired with DDR5 memory. Next up we have Hogwarts Legacy. And here the 14900K saw a reasonable 15% improvement when paired with DDR5 memory, though we did see a far more substantial 35% boost to the 1% lows. The 14600K, that also saw similar gains at 18%, while the 12900K's performance was boosted by 21%, though just a 16% gain was seen with the 12600K. Interestingly, although ACC benefits massively from L3 cache performance, system memory doesn't appear to be anywhere near as important. For example, the 14900K, that saw the biggest gains here at just 10%. So although DDR5 did offer a performance boost across the board, the uplift was very mild. This time I haven't benchmarked Spider-Man Remastered with ray tracing enabled, which is what I've done previously, and it has led to DDR5 offering quite a large performance advantage over DDR4, but the data here has been updated for our CPU testing, and the very high preset without RT enabled results in less CPU limited data. Anyway, we do still find some interesting results. The 14th gen CPU is only saw a 9% improvement with DDR5 under these test conditions, while the 12th gen models saw anywhere from a 13 to 22% increase. The 12900K looked to be bandwidth limited with DDR4 memory, as it was just 5% faster than the 12600K, but with the faster DDR5 memory, it was 14% faster. Homeworld 3 is a demanding game, especially when the battle heats up, and the 1% lows on Intel's LGA 1700 processors aren't great, and we see that the difference between DDR4 and DDR5 here is very small. DDR5 does offer around a 10% boost to the average frame rate, which is nice, but it doesn't really enhance the overall experience that much. Testing with a Plague Tale Requiem typically sees around a 16-17% to performance boost for DDR5 over DDR4, with the 12900K being the odd exception here, achieving a 22% boost using the higher clocked DDR5 memory. It was the only CPU to see a decent boost to the 1% lows as well, with the other parts only seeing a 3-4% improvement. As we found previously, Counter-Strike 2 isn't sensitive to memory performance, producing similar results using DDR4 and DDR5 memory. Well, at least with the 14th gen processors. The 12900K, that did say mild 6% improvement, while the 12600K was 9% faster when using DDR5 memory. The Starfield results show similar performance trends to many of the games that we've already looked at. 
that being the 12th gen models receiving a much larger performance boost when using DDR5 memory. The 14900K for example, it was just 14% faster using DDR5 and the 14600K was 19% faster, though both are reasonable gains. However, the 1200K and 12600K, they saw a 33 to 34% performance uplift when paired with DDR5, and that is a massive increase. We also saw a similar thing in Horizon Forbidden West. In this example, the 1200K and 12600K both saw a 16% performance uplift when paired with DDR5 memory, which again is a very nice improvement, but the 1200K enjoyed a much more substantial 28% uplift and the 12600K a massive 32% increase. So once again, it is the 12th gen models that really seem to benefit the most from the increased memory bandwidth. The gains seen when testing with Hitman 3 are much the same across the board, ranging from 22 to 26% depending on the processor. So DDR5 is quite handy here, boosting the performance by a noteworthy margin. Then finally we have Watch Dogs Legion, and this is another example where the performance uplift was much the same regardless of the CPU used, ranging from 28% with the 12th gen models to 31% with the 14th gen models. Okay, so here's a look at the 13 game average. The 14th gen processors both saw on average a 16% improvement, which is substantially more than the DDR4 4000 versus DDR5 7200 comparison I did last year with the 14900K. Though that comparison did feature 21 games with faster DDR4 memory, and many of the games were different, or using different test methods, as was the case with Baldur's Gate 3 for example. Other noteworthy changes include Intel's updated power settings. Previously we were testing without any power limits, whereas we're now using the Intel Extreme profile. So a 16% improvement on average is quite substantial. That said, we saw an even larger 20 to 22% gain with the 12th gen parts. And again, I'm assuming that the larger L2 and L3 cache capacities of the 13th and 14th gen Raptor Lake parts make them less sensitive to memory performance. It's also clear that the newer games are more memory demanding, as the 1200K was only 10% faster when paired with DDR5 memory in our earlier testing, as we saw in our 5800X 3D review. So there you have it, the gap between DDR4 and DDR5 memory continues to widen as games become increasingly demanding. And this is to be expected though, and really with the exception of AMD's aging AM4 platform, it doesn't really make sense to buy DDR4 memory anymore anyway. And for new system builders, it really hasn't made sense for, I'd say over a year now. Intel is about to retire their LGA 1700 platform and the next generation Arrow Lake architecture will drop DDR4 support entirely, moving to DDR5 exclusively, just as AMD did with AM5. So while we can still use 12th, 13th and 14th gen CPUs to track how DDR4 and DDR5 compare in future games, that'd be more of a for science type uh, testing rather than, I don't know, relevant buying information. Likewise, we can continue to compare the 5800X and 5800X 3D in future games to see how that 3D V cache is aiding the X 3D chip, though I don't really expect too much to change there as it hasn't to date. And that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this kind of random hybrid video where we explored has the 5800X 3D aged poorly and how is DDR5 comparing to the older DDR4. So yeah, if you enjoyed all of that, give it a like, subscribe because we have a lot more CPU content coming up on the channel amongst uh, some other interesting content. So yeah, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. Also we have Floatplane Patreon, check those out if you're interested in supporting the channel and getting some more access to behind the scenes content, our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, and behind the scenes content. I don't know if I said that already. Anyway, a lot of cool stuff there, so check it out if you're interested, but if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time. <laughs>